With 5 main attribute scores to major in and a grand total of 236 perk slots to choose from, it's fair to say that there are many ways to build out your character in Cyberpunk. And today we'll be diving deep into one of my favourite builds in the game, which is proficient in both stealth and the use of handguns. You see, with this build you're going to be able to hit enemies for anything between 400,000 to a million points of damage per shot. And while some might call this overkill, which, let's be real, it definitely is, I prefer to call it satisfying. Anyway, I'll be breaking it down into a few different categories, these being the main weapon and weapon mods, the perks you will need, the cyberware you should pick up and anything else that's important. And if you do go on to enjoy this video or do find it helpful, consider subscribing. I put out cyberpunk guides every other day on the channel. Other than that, let's jump into it. Since this character build concentrates so heavily on handguns, you won't be surprised to hear that your main weapon is going to be one of the many legendary options Night City has to offer. This being the Overture, which is a power pistol that throws complexity out of the window by concentrating on high DPS, high crit chance, high crit damage and also comes with a great headshot multiplier. To get the legendary version of the Overture, head on over to the pin location on the map in the northeastern region of Watson. Once here, you'll find yourself in an area rife with cargo containers and some enemies. Either take these enemies out or sneak past them and head in the direction of the wrecked car. From here, simply keep on traveling straight ahead and you'll see the overture lying on a makeshift table just above an orange plastic chair. Now here are the stats of the weapon when fully upgraded and at max level, so if you do pick the weapon up at an earlier level, be sure to upgrade it as you level up. And in general, just upgrade it as much as you possibly can to increase its overall stats. But no weapon is truly complete without some additions, so let's take a look at some of the software mods and attachments that will push the Overture, or another chosen handgun, to its absolute limits. When it comes to the scopes of the weapon, you should really go with whatever you feel comfortable with, it really doesn't matter for this, but I would suggest something with a little range as you'll be using range to your advantage. When it comes to the muzzle attachment, however, there is no better option than the XE10 Electo Silencer, which grants you a 2.5 times damage multiplier when attacking from stealth. In other words, this is an essential part of reaching those high damage numbers when coupled with the perks and cyberware I'll be discussing later on. As for the software mods, you should think of applying as many pacifier mods as possible, as these will increase your overall crit damage by 12% per mod equipped. Now getting these mods and attachments is as simple as visiting the numerous gun vendors spread throughout Night City, and hoping they have what you need. And if you can't find what you're looking for on your first try, simply walk outside of the weapons store and skip time by 48 hours. From there, check back in with the vendor and you'll now notice that he has restocked his inventory, giving you another chance of getting the items needed. You can also always use that duplication exploit I posted the other day to duplicate the pacifier mods once you obtain one of them. This will save you a ton of time trying to farm these mods, so for those of you who missed that video, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Onto the attributes and perks now, and let's start by taking a look at where you should be investing your points and which perks you should be concentrating on. But firstly, I do want to mention that this build is very flexible, so you could technically have a stealth crit handgun build while also going into melee. Or if you want to go into the body attribute and get some of the health perk bonuses and carry weight bonuses, you can also do that as well. Now in classic rogue style, we'll be aiming for a maximum of 20 points into both reflexes and call, with the rest being divided into whatever your hearts desire to add your own spin to the build. We'll mainly be investing in perks within those attributes mentioned, and we'll also be taking full advantage of the crit damage, crit chance, and stealth damage bonuses you get for maxing them out. Let's move on to the perks now though, and starting with the handguns tree in the reflexes category. 
The perks you should be choosing here, in no particular order, are as follows. High Noon will increase your crit chance with both pistols and revolvers by a total of 12%, while the Worst World perk will do the same by 10% when fully mudded. You can then rely on the Fistful of Euro Dollars perk to increase your critical damage doubt by 20% and Desperado to increase your general damage doubt by another 10%. Another important perk is Rio Bravo, which increases your headshot damage multiplier with pistols and revolvers by 30%. This is a must-have perk. Stealth gameplay will also require you to take on the Long Shot Drop Pop and Wild West perks. This gives you increased damage doubt to enemies more than 5 meters away from you by 15%, while removing the damage penalty inflicted on pistols and revolvers when shooting from outside of their range. This is very, very big and combos insanely well with the Grande Final perk, which allows you to do double damage with the last round of your pistol or revolver's magazine. Now, I have to say that these three perks alone are incredible for entry kills on this game and are a big part in how you reach between 900,000 to a million damage in just one shot. And finally, for the handguns tree, since we'll be maxing out reflexes, you can also go ahead and pick up the good, the bad, and the ugly. By doing so, you'll increase your damage and armor by 30% for 5 seconds when successfully landing a critical hit. And while this perk isn't really necessary, it is a bonus if you choose to heavily invest in this tree. Outside of these perks mentioned, there is also a lot you can invest in when it comes to handguns and pistols. I just wanted to cover the main ones needed for those high damage numbers, and then you guys can choose the rest how you please to put your own spin on it. But now let's move into the call attribute, as it's time to take a look at the stealth tree. Now when it comes to the stealth subcategory, you're going to want to choose options that will both increase your crit chance, and allow you to stay hidden to double up on these advantages. The Silent and Deadly perk, for example, would increase damage dealt by silenced weapons by 25% while sneaking, while Strike from the Shadows would increase your crit chance by 15% while sneaking. Both absolutely huge perks in this tree. Choosing Ghost will then capitalize on these advantages by increasing the time it takes for enemies to detect you by 40%. The other two useful perks in this tree is Assassin, which allows you to deal an extra 15% of damage to human enemies, and Sniper, which increases the damage of headshots fired from outside of combat by 50%. So some huge stealth bonuses here for you to take advantage of. Again, outside of these perks, you can choose to invest in whatever you like. Now, the other skill tree in this category is Cold-Blooded, and... Although not entirely necessary, I also decided to invest quite heavily down this tree. But essentially, what you'll be needing from this skill tree is the Frozen Precision perk, which increases headshot damage by a whopping 50% both in and out of combat. And this is across the board, no matter which weapon you are using. This, realistically speaking, is the only perk that is essential from this tree. However, maxing the call attribute will also give you access to the Merciless perk. Choosing it will increase your crit chance by 10% and crit damage by 25%, so long as you have Cold Blood active. And selecting perks like Coldest Blood, Unbreakable, Critical Condition, and Bloodswell will also allow you to keep Cold Blooded stacks pretty much the entire time you're in combat. But again, you don't have to invest this heavily down this tree. It's just what I ended up going down at the time. With all that being said, now that I've covered pretty much all of the main perks you will need for this, now let's look at some of the cyberware you should pick up to really complete this build. Now when it comes to cyberware, the Militech Falcon, Sandy Vista and Mark V will be your best friend here. Activating it will not only slow down time by 30% for a grand total of 18 seconds, but increase the overall damage doubt by 15%, critical chance by 20%, and critical damage by 35% while it's active. This is a must-have for a build like this. The bonuses paired with its slow down time effect truly make it so you can wipe an entire compound of enemies with absolute ease. This legendary piece of iconic cyberware can be bought from the Ripper Dock at Wow Springs, which you can find pinned right here on your map. Just keep in mind that it does cost quite a pretty penny to purchase and will scale depending on what level you are. 
And finally, this brings us to the clothing you will want to deck your character out in. And I'll be honest with you all here, clothing really isn't that big a deal when it comes to using this specific build. I even decided to try this naked and was still able to pull ridiculous damage numbers. That being said, there are a few pieces of legendary armor that does come with 2-4 mod slots which can be pretty helpful, especially when you get caught between a rock and a hard place. So. If you do want to know where to find some of these legendary armor pieces, again, I'll have a link in the description down below. When it comes to clothing mods on the other hand, I would suggest applying a Deadeye mod and a Predator mod to each clothing item, and then stacking the remainder of open slots with armadillo mods that will raise your armor rating through the roof. Now the reason I'm saying to do this is because it does offer somewhat of a bonus to your critical chance and critical damage when you have Deadeye mods installed. However, there does seem to be a bug in play at the moment that prevents some of these mods from stacking with one another. For instance, when you stack Deadeye mods on one piece of clothing, they just don't stack. And even when you put one Deadeye mod on each piece of clothing, sometimes they just stop working and do nothing. And you won't even be able to see an increase in your statistics. In fact, sometimes for some players, they will actually decrease your critical damage and critical chance. So the best advice I can give is when you are applying a crit damage mod to your armor, check your stats beforehand and then check them afterwards. But again, either way, it really doesn't make the greatest of differences uh, when it comes to these armor mods. And that's pretty much all you need to know to create one of the hardest hitting builds in Cyberpunk. Now, I am aware that I haven't done the complete best job on this build. Uh, there is other things that I could have done to potentially max this out even further. But I wanted to give you guys a good base of how you can hit these insane damage numbers. I will be working on other builds in the future. In fact, I do have a tech sniper rifle build coming up. Uh, where you'll be hitting numbers in the 2 million range, so look out for that as well, and subscribe for more Cyberpunk content in the future.